Hello everyone and welcome back to the Airfix YouTube channel. We're going to be tackling a full blown Airfix kit in this video, rather than the usual starter sets that we cover in the How To series. In this case it's one of the Airfix gift sets, and it's the 172nd scale Westland Sea King HAR3. This is a modern derivative of a famous search and rescue helicopter that first appeared in the skies over the Falklands War in 1982. Because this is a gift set, it comes with the model, the poly cement, the paintbrushes, and the acrylic paints that you need to build a decent model right from the box. On the back of the box you'll find the usual full colour diagrams, with colour callouts for the supplied acrylic paints. In the small square boxes you'll find numbers which relate back to the supplied transfer sheet, and these will guide you in placing the transfers to create an aircraft which was flown by Prince William in Sea Flight No. 22 Squadron over North Wales in 2011. Because this isn't a starter set, this is a skill 3 kit, and that means it's a full blown model and hasn't got the reduced parts count or simplified build sequence, so it is for slightly more advanced modellers. Inside the box you'll find a bag containing 5 frames of light grey injection moulded plastic, and to prevent damage, a separate bag containing the clear frame which covers all of the windows and lights. The smaller bag contains the 6 Humbrol acrylic paints and a tube of poly cement, and there are two paintbrushes, a zero for details, and four to cover the larger areas more quickly. The supplied transfer sheet covers all of the markings and some of the details for the cockpit, which would be impossible to paint with a brush. And there is of course a fully detailed instruction manual, which details the whole construction process from start to finish, and it's important that you give these a good read before you begin your project, as there are many areas on this model which won't be accessible once you get further along in the build sequence. We're going to use a very basic toolkit in this video, consisting of some tweezers to help apply the transfers, some cutters to initially remove the parts from the frames, and then once they've been removed we'll use a modelling knife to trim away any excess plastic that's left behind. For final cleanup, we'll use the file from the Humbrol Modeler's toolset. This is a very basic toolkit, as we wanted to show that you don't need to use anything fancy to build this kit. If you're not familiar with model kits, the parts come supplied on these frames, which are part of the injection moulding process, but are also used to organise the parts. Each frame has a rectangular tab, into which is moulded an identifying letter. Next to the parts themselves, a smaller tab contains an identifying number. This combination of letter and number is referenced in the circular callouts in the instructions. The scheme supplied with this kit uses a gloss yellow as its base colour, which can be tricky to paint, so in order to give us a bit of a head start, we're going to cover all of the kit's parts in some Humbrol acrylic spray primer, while they're all still attached to the frame. This will provide us with a really nice smooth matte surface, which is great to paint on, and will really help when applying that gloss yellow. If you're going to try this at home, just remember to read all of the warnings before you give it a go. We're lucky enough to have extraction here in the Airfix workshop, so after putting some cardboard down to protect the bench, we tested the can out to get used to the spray pattern, and then started applying a nice even coat over all of the frames. We don't want to apply this too heavy, and build it up so it obstructs any detail, just a couple of passes from a few different angles to get everything into all the nooks and crannies is all it takes, and once we're finished we're left with a really nice matte smooth surface, which will take the paint really easily, and make it much easier to apply that gloss yellow later on. After leaving the primer to cure fully, we started the actual build. The first thing we need to do is remove parts from the frame. To do this we cut the frame connection points using the cutters, but we did so slightly away from the model surface to avoid damaging any details. This leaves a small protrusion of plastic sticking out from the model parts, which is simply trimmed away using the modelling knife. Once all of these small pieces of plastic have been cut away, we can complete the final part of the cleanup process using the file to just remove any excess plastic that's left behind. This is the basic cleanup process that we'll use on all of the parts throughout the video. Following the instructions, there are some locating holes which need to be opened up using a modelling drill, but obviously we don't have one in our basic toolkit, so we're just going to twist the modelling knife in the recessed locating point provided, 
just until it goes through the part and then we'll clean this up gently with the knife, leaving us with a nice neat hole. The next process we need to think about is gluing parts together. We've removed the second part in the build sequence from the frame and cleaned it up with the same process that we just showed. And now we're going to test the fit of the parts without any glue in a process commonly referred to as dry fitting. Now that we know everything fits together properly, we need to remove the primer from the surface where the two parts meet, as this will allow the poly cement to get to the bare plastic underneath to do its work. Poly cement works by melting the plastic of the model so the two parts are fused together permanently. It's supplied in a small metal tube which does have quite a broad nozzle and this can make it tricky to control if you try applying it directly to the kit. This can lead to the unsightly fingerprints that are so stereotypical of getting started in this hobby. To give us a bit more control over the glue, we'll cut a small piece of the kit box away to form a pallet and then we'll cut one of the thicker portions of the box from the upper corner to form an applicator. We can now transfer the poly cement to the pallet section and then use the applicator to take the glue from the pallet to the surface of the model, giving us much more control and much less risk. After holding the parts together for a few seconds, the plastic should start to melt and those two parts are joined together. This is the basic gluing process that we'll use throughout the rest of the video. We can now settle down into a rhythm of removing the parts from the frame, cleaning them up and gluing them in position using the techniques that we've shown so far in the video. Before going too far with the build, it's worth pointing out that we wouldn't be able to access the interior to paint it if we glued the radar operator station in position. So before we fit that part, we're going to go ahead and paint the interior floor. We'll be using the number 64 paint supplied with the kit, and these paints do separate sometimes when the kit's been in storage for a while. So before we used the paint, we gave it a good stir just to restore its consistency. This only takes a few seconds, and even though the paint does look a little bit funny at first, it's perfectly fine to use. After transferring some of the number 64 into our palette, we then diluted it slightly with just a few drops of ordinary tap water. This additional water just prolongs the drying time of the paint and it helps it self level on the surface of the model which gives a much better finish. Because we've added water to the paint it has reduced the opacity slightly so we have to use two or three thin coats to build up the colour coverage. If we painted on one thick layer of paint straight from the pot this is likely to result in three dimensional texture on the surface of the model and the finish won't be anywhere near as smooth or as convincing and we also run the risk of blocking out some of the surface details on the model because the paint will fill them in. After giving the interior floor a couple of coats of the grey paint, we switched over to the black paint supplied with the kit, diluted it in exactly the same fashion and picked out the radar operator's chair. The floor of the cockpit also needs to be painted black so while we had the mixture in the palette, we skipped ahead and painted this area as well. You'll notice that we haven't painted into any of the recesses. These are the locating points for the detail parts and we don't want to obstruct them with any paint as this may interfere with the fit of the pieces later on. Some of the benches for the rear of the interior need to be cut down as per the instructions and to do this we avoided bending the parts by scoring very gently with the modelling knife while the part is fully supported on the cutting mat. After taking away the unnecessary seats, we cleaned up the end of the cut with the file to make sure there was no excess plastic left behind and we proceeded with the rest of the interior build until we were left with the completed interior assembly. The only part that's not fitted at this point is the instrument panel for the cockpit. We have included this in because first we need to add one of the markings from the supplied transfer sheet. These don't work like stickers and instead we have to first cut the required transfer away from the sheet using the modelling knife. Once we've got our marking free from the sheet, we can grab it with the tweezers and soak it in ordinary tap water for just a few seconds and then put it aside to soak. The water will reactivate the adhesive that holds the transfers onto the sheet and when it's ready to use it will move around on the surface under gentle pressure from a paintbrush. We can then add some tap water to the surface of the model part just to help us with repositioning the transfer and then we can slide it into position and then adjust its final resting place using the back of the modelling knife to pull the transfer around on the surface. Using a small piece of tissue we can then wick away the excess moisture and the transfer is in position. 
Once the details have been added to the instrument panel, we can glue this in position and the interior assembly is completed. We can now start test fitting the interior between the two halves of the fuselage. If we've cleaned everything up properly and everything's nicely aligned, there should be no gaps when we press the two halves together and no obstructions preventing us from closing up the model. Everything fits really well, so we move on to the next step, which is to use the first of the clear parts to add the windows to the sides of the fuselage. Working with the clear plastic is very similar to using the grey plastic, however it is slightly more brittle so we have to take more care when we're removing it from the frame. The clean up procedure remains the same with excess plastic trimmed away with the modelling knife before everything being sanded smooth using the file to make sure that there are no obstructions. We then need to remove the paint from around the recessed reveal in the side of the fuselage to ensure a perfect fit of the clear part, which will dry fit before we add any glue. This fits in place really well, so we can go ahead and use our palette and applicator again to add some very tiny drops of the poly cement around the inside of that recessed area. We're using tiny spots of the glue rather than a continuous bead, as we don't want this to bubble out when the part is squeezed into position. Once the glue's been added, the clear part is manoeuvred into place and just held in place for a few seconds to let the glue do its work and that window is fitted. We can then repeat the process for each of the windows in both sides of the fuselage and once the glue is completely dry we can move on and fit the interior assembly onto one of the two halves. After adding poly cement to the raised locating tabs for the assembly, we can press it into position and hold it for a few seconds just for the glue to take effect. With the interior glued into place, we can now go ahead and close up the two halves of the model. We apply poly cement along the front face where it meets with the other half of the fuselage, but we'll concentrate this glue towards the inside of the kit so that any excess doesn't squeeze out onto the detailed surface. This is the most important glue join on the model and it will have a big impact on how the kit looks when it's finished. We need to make sure that we get rid of any gaps, but also that we don't have excess glue pouring out all over the place. After pressing the two halves of the fuselage together and holding them firmly for a few seconds, we can then use some ordinary clothes pegs straight off the washing line just to hold these for us while the glue cures. With the fuselage assembled, the next few steps in the instructions are simply a case of adding more detail parts to the model. To do this we repeated the same removal, clean up and gluing process that we showed at the start of the video. It's not until we reach the undercarriage section of the build that we need to do something slightly different. What we're going to do is leave the undercarriage connected to the frame, but we're going to remove some of the frame itself to make it a little bit more accessible. This is so we can paint it while it's still attached and we have enough room to get round to all of the different sides of the components. After stirring the white paint supplied with the kit, we can transfer some to the palette and thin it down slightly with ordinary tap water before giving our undercarriage components an initial coat of white paint. White is a particularly tricky colour to paint with and it doesn't cover very well at the best of times and we've thinned this paint down slightly with water so it is going to take multiple coats to build up good coverage with the colour. This is a bit of an investment of time and patience however as it will give a better finish and it won't obliterate the surface details. After painting in all of the white areas, the tyres were edged in black and it was time to snip all of the components from the frame ready to assemble the landing gear. We did this in exactly the same fashion that we showed at the start of the video, adding poly cement and then pressing the parts into place. Once the landing gear was assembled, this had to be added to the side float assemblies which come in two halves. Again we concentrated the glue around the inside face of the join so it wouldn't squeeze out onto the model when the two halves were pressed together. After leaving these to cure fully, they then have to be added to the model. First the support arm was glued into the recess on the side of the fuselage, and then before that glue went solid, we added poly cement to the side float and manoeuvred this into position. Because the glue wasn't solid on the supporting arm, we were able to adjust it slightly to fit in the recess on the side float assembly. Once everything was located, we could hold it still while the glue cured, and then we have our first float added. After repeating the process on the other side and then adding the rear wheel, we now have a model which sits on its own undercarriage. 
When we reach the canopy section of the build, there's an unusual little sequence where we have to add a grey plastic part on the inside of one of the clear parts, add a small transfer to this, and then we can go ahead and assemble the canopy. We're using the same technique that we used on the fuselage windows, adding tiny dots of poly cement around the recessed area which hold these parts in place, and then pushing the clear parts into position. Provided that everything's been aligned correctly with the build so far, these should fit into place and close up the cockpit. We then have a little bit more work to do with the clear frame, as it contains both of the doors for the helicopter. We're going to paint them with two coats of light grey paint supplied with the kit on the inside and outside faces. This will not only act as a primer to help us with the yellow base coat later on, but it also prevents any light from passing through the clear parts, which would change the colour of the yellow base coat on these areas only and make them stand out and look unnatural. After giving these parts two coats of light grey on the inside and outside, they can be snipped from the frame, cleaned up and glued into position. With all of the detail parts added to the model and the rotor blades assembled, we've popped these on for a quick test fit, and then we're going to take them straight back off, as this makes it slightly more accessible to paint the kit. We now need to add the gloss yellow base coat to the model. We're going to give the paint a good stir first to make sure everything's mixed together properly, and then transfer some paint to the palette and add about 30% tap water. It's essential that we keep the yellow paint thin at this stage, as we're going to be adding many many thin layers to the model to build up the yellow coverage gradually. If we added two thick coats of yellow paint straight from the pot, we might paint the model much quicker, but there'll be a lot of three dimensional texture in the finish, and a lot of the surface detail will be obliterated. So it's much better for us to build up the colour very gradually with thin layers, it just takes a little bit longer and a bit more patience. After adding the first layer of yellow to the model, we leave this to dry fully to make sure that we don't drag any of the previous layers around when we go to paint our second coat. And then we can add a second coat of paint just to strengthen the yellow coverage a little bit. After the second coat's dry, we can repeat the process and we'll do this as many times as needed to build up a really strong, vivid coat of gloss yellow all over the model. After allowing all of the paint to dry fully, we can move on to one of the trickier processes in modelling, which is picking out the canopy frame. To make this slightly easier, we'll use the smaller of the two brushes supplied with the kit, and we'll keep our paint mixture slightly thicker with just 10% tap water. This means it will build up coverage quicker and we don't have to repeat this process as many times. After painting in all of the areas that need to be yellow, we can refer to the diagram on the back of the box and pick out the areas which need to be black. We also need to paint in the details at the front, such as the windscreen wipers, to make sure that they're painted black as well, and around the rest of the vehicle there are some other details which need to be picked out in black, and before we go ahead and start painting these, we're going to edge the portion where they meet with the main body of the helicopter, just to make sure we've got that neat demarcation line between the two colours. By painting very slowly and carefully, we're able to avoid getting any black paint onto our yellow base coat, and these areas are quickly coloured in. If any of the paint during the canopy painting process did get onto the clear parts, we can clear this away very carefully using a toothpick to just scratch the paint away right up to the edge of the raised detail. Once this has been cleaned up and all of the details have been painted black as required, we can move on to the final stage of the build, which is applying the transfers. After selecting the marking that we wish to apply, this needs to be cut free from the backing sheet with the modelling knife before being taken with the tweezers and immersed in ordinary tap water for just a few seconds. This can then be set aside to soak for about a minute and when it's ready to apply, the transfer will move under gentle pressure from the paintbrush. We can then add some water to the model surface and slide the marking into place. Any final positioning can be done using the back of the modelling knife blade as the water on the model surface allows it to move around. When it's in position, we can use some tissue to soak away the excess water and the transfer has been applied. We now need to add the rest of the transfers in line with the diagram on the back of the box, and because this isn't a starter set, there are quite a few, so we're not going to show them all in this video, but the process for application was the same, even on the larger ones, which will dry and settle down over the surface details. We can now paint in the black areas on the extremities of the side floats on the helicopter.
We've left these in their yellow base coat because these are the areas likely to touch the desk and could potentially get chipped while we're applying the transfers. With the main body of the model complete, we can now switch our attention to painting the rotor blades. The centre of the rotor is painted black, and all of the blades are painted light grey, except for one which needs to be yellow, so again we need to build up the colour with multiple thin layers. The tips of the grey rotors also need to be yellow, so we can work our way around the assembly painting in each of the tips. By the time we get back around to the yellow blade, that should be completely dry and we can add another coat. After about 4 or 5 coats, we've achieved good solid gloss coverage on the yellow rotor blade, each of the tips are painted and the main rotor is complete. The tail rotor is given a base coat of black paint before being allowed to dry fully, before we add the red and white transfers to the tip of each blade. We cut these from the sheet in one go and soak them all together, so we can quickly turn the rotor around and slide another transfer into position, just to speed up the process. Once this is dry, we can add a touch of poly cement to the mounting point and push the tail rotor into position, making sure everything's aligned correctly before the glue sets. The main rotor is dropped into place on the spigot at the top of the model, and then a small dot of poly cement is added, trying not to get any glue on the rotor blades so they can still be turned on the model, and then the final piece is added, which is this small cap that's been painted in the same gloss yellow as the rest of the helicopter. With this in place, that concludes the build, and we've built our Westland Seeking. Here's a full view of our completed Westland Seeking HAR3 gift set from Airfix. We've put this kit together with only basic tools, and we used the paint and the glue supplied with the kit to try and replicate the beginner experience in this video. It goes to show that you don't need a huge investment to get a good standard of model straight from the box. It's a slightly longer and more complex process than one of the Airfix starter sets, but the results speak for themselves, and it also provides the modeler with a wealth of experience they can take into their next project. So thank you very much for joining us for some modeling today, and as always, we'll see you again next time.